Hello and welcome to another Opinion Piece. Today, this is the second in a three-parter. This is when I, I look at cons exclusive games for the different consoles, which has some type of exclusivity. Today, we're going to look at Xbox One. Microsoft did an interesting thing this year when they announced that all exclusives from now on will be released on Windows 10 and Xbox One. Or which I think was interesting with me because mainly you, you can essentially buy all of the games on with PC and if you don't really care about if you really want to spend money on the PC instead you can buy that and uh, essentially skip the Xbox One which kind of sad essentially because they the console needed more games for me to actually jump on the ship and actually buy it. But now I started to buy the games on PC. Sorry, Microsoft, but there are some interesting games, all console exclusive and time exclusives. So yeah, not that many, sadly. I missed a lot of games probably because I focus on the big names that I know about, mainly the retail t titles, plus one in the game that I know about. Well, okay, another digital game. Killing Instinct Season 3, I think, was released this year. This fighting, I don't really care. So yeah. Quantum Break was the big naked game that next big game that I really were looking forward to but it seemed that they messed it up a little bit there's a big controversy about the 720p resolution which I think was kind of ridiculous but it looks a little bit yeah the picture quality can have been a little bit better in my opinion even though it, the graphics was kind of amazing when it comes to actually buildings, environments and so you can see uh, it was a little shady the screen was always shady and this was on PC because I bought it on PC I don't didn't buy it on any Xbox One I like the game but of course the picture could have been better and it had some glitches that was kind of weird, but anyway. Next big game that I know about was is an indie game that was time exclusive for one month. It was Inside. Looks interesting and weird, and I will never play it. <laughs> it looks very really interesting. I will say that, but I am not interested enough to actually buy it. Then we wait till September when we had two big releases. The first one was ReCore. I was originally wanted to buy it, but now I have probably changed my mind because the mess of a release it was. It was buggy, had weird glitches, and had really long load times at release. Sadly, uh, I think it was on both PC and Xbox One. This is sad. It looked like, a, like an interesting game, but they could have done a lot better with it, I think. Given a more del development time, delayed it. So, of course, they have delayed a lot of games this year, so I think. I think they actually delayed half of the games they originally planned to release this year. That is why they don't have that many, sadly. But more development time for record and it could have been a lot better in my opinion. And I may might have bought it sooner. Next one is your yearly Forza sports game. It looks interesting, but I don't really want to play racing games, sadly. Next big release was Gears of War 4, one of their ten pole franchises and I've seen Ball through and I wanted to look through it because if I wanted to buy it and 
for me it feels kind of meh. I like Gears of War 2 because that was the first game I actually played, I think, it, or maybe only, I can't remember. But Gears of War 4 felt kind of meh when it comes to single play in my opinion. Uh, and I don't really care for multiplayer, so I'm not. Maybe if it's half the price, because the story looked. They yoked too much, in my opinion. And when they wanted to be more serious, it was kind of. And the final release is in December, which is Dead Rising 4, which is a timed exclusive actually. It's weird because I think Dead Rising has been kind of a Xbox exclusive title for a long time, but or console exclusive. But anyway, I don't really care for Dead Rising. They released Dead Rising, the first and second game on all platforms again as uh, support but didn't really care to look at them and I don't really care about this one. So to summarize for me Xbox One have had a bad year. It could have been a lot better, they could have been have a lot more games, at least had all of the ones that they originally planned to have. They cancelled Play the Legends, which was one game. They delayed Sea of Thieves, Scalebound, Crackdown 3, and Halo Wars 2. Five games is gone. So half of the games is gone, essentially. Which leave only f five, six games left. Which is really bar barren, in my opinion. It should have been a little bit more, maybe eight at least. The one they released was mainly messy and could have been had more development time but that could, could have just left them with maybe one or two games this year Quantum Break was the best one in my opinion even though the graphics was a little bit weird in my opinion it, it was story wise good and was interesting enough to me, for me to play it Record mess Force Horizon didn't really care Gears of War 4 Meh, buy it when it is cheap. Dead Rising 4, mm, don't really care. Inside, I don't really care. So, for me, it wasn't one being a good year for Xbox One because I didn't bother to buy it. They released the Slim version, which will enough have a 4K player or UHD player. It's kind of neat, but. The 4K Blu-rays are expensive, so I don't really care, and I need to buy a 4K TV for that, so maybe in the future if they, they're still around, but right now, I'm not running out to buy it, sadly. So for me, I'm looking forward to see what they have in store for 2017, because this year has been lackluster. Hope to see you next time for Wii U. Bye.